Uh, Gino and uh, Derek, the quad father from mm. the Bad Luck Boys, had it out on In Hot Water today. Okay. And then I wanted to have Derek on our show, but then he went on Kevin Brennan's show right away and trashed up Gino and that whole thing. And I'm like, well, I don't want to be Kevin's sloppy set. Like, I don't want to be, you know, he's just making the rounds and now yeah. I'm, I'm one of the stops. Like, I'd do that for Tom Cruise, but not, <laughs> but not Derek from the Backyard Boys. Yeah. So it's really tricky because this argument they hear that, that we're about to hear from In Hot Water today and that we're about to watch is a very interesting argument because on one hand, Gino is responding to something that came to him. Okay. On, on the, Like you told him to do, by the way. Wait for the shit to come to you. Right. I did tell him that. Yes. So then he says some very kind of like pretty pointed nasty shit uh, okay. about Derek's dead friend. Uh-huh. So Derek calls it because Derek sent Gino a, a, a link to a GoFundMe. And, and Balls, if you have the link to that GoFundMe, feel free to uh, post it in the chat. I've been meaning, I told Derek I would, and I forgot, and I apologize. Uh, I'm not answering because I think that's here. Call from Buzzy. See, I don't, tr I don't trust it. I'm not answering. I think that could be Charlie. See, I'm a paranoid fuck now. I know, but that's, it's funny, but it, it, I can't do it. Here, you know what? I don't know who the fuck Buzzy is. Buzzard Bob. Just forget it. But anyway, so Gina, I, I need to focus. Real guy well, and you're just shitting on this has been a now. very ADHD show. I need to focus now. So okay. Get away focus. from the chat here. Gino starts shitting on the, the Backyard Boys GoFundMe link for this Bobby's mom mm -hmm. to pay for the funeral expenses and stuff like that. I think they've raised like six, seven thousand dollars They're looking for 15 And... Uh, Gino starts shitting on it and saying, if you're an alcoholic, you know, you got to get better. You don't give a shit about your family. We're going to play Gino's thoughts on it. I don't need to, uh, you know, surmise, surmise them. Uh, well, then Derek calls in and they start having it out. And they're both making good points. Okay. I felt Derek did the thing where you let the other person get you so riled up that you start making it things that the argument isn't about. And you start... You know that, that woman thing that women do in arguments where they just try to hurt? Like, instead of make oh, a yeah. point, they just try to, you know, uh, in your situation, you would have nothing, you would know nothing about this. But Not some, sometimes when you're making no. very good points that hurt to a woman, they just decide to start striking you personally about shit that has nothing to do with the argument, yeah. just to kind of try to back you off and not have to admit they're losing ground. So that kind of happened to Derek. But then Gino did kind of lean in. My take on the, the thing is this. I didn't know how the guy died. I just knew that people who have been supportive of my show and I've been on their show and they've been fans of ours, mm -hmm. uh, e even though they kind of get involved with that MLC shit, I want nothing to do with that world of old men who are like barely hanging on. Um, even though like they're involved with that, I'm like, you know what? They've always been good to us. We'll put their link out there. We'll put the GoFundMe out there, the whole thing. Uh, Gino decided to take that GoFundMe and go, fuck him, <laughs> drank himself to death, doesn't give a shit about any of his family. I'm like, okay, I would not have gone that route. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> and they decided to have it out. So I got a few timestamps here from Gino's okay. show today. I was listening to this in the, in the gym roots. There you go, gym counter. How many times I mentioned the gym today? Uh, the first clip is Gino discussing the GoFundMe. All right. For the, now, how do you feel about a GoFundMe for somebody who dies in your family? What are your thoughts on the whole thing? I don't know. If you can dupe idiots on the internet to give you money, fine. More power to you. Okay. I want to figure out how to do it. I, I could use a few things. All right. I got a bill I need paid. Uh, let's see what Gino has to say. Let's count the point counterpoints right. and see whose side we're on here. So much, it would just be like a refund. I said I'm not. I'm ah oh, yes 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 <laughs> fucking but by, by the way that clip you've just seen every in hot water episode ever <laughs> I'm about to make a cogent point yes fucking hell shit hungry Larry no it's hungry Larry no. appreciate it that I appreciate that what, what, now, now, I'm gonna say this when Pat Dixon broke my jaw oh, and they go. wanted to set up a GoFundMe for me down. a living person. A living person. Oh boy. Um. Oh, thank you so much. I love I know it. I know. I run a podcast. 
when they wanted to set up a GoFundMe me for me, a living person who was a who was an actual victim of felony assault, what did I say? I said, don't you dare. He said, gimme, gimme, gimme. I said, gimme. I said, don't you dare. I even yelled at fucking uh, then fucking loyal friend Bob Levy fucking saying, I don't even want to do this benefit show. In fact, I even fucking, I, I never got the money for the benefit show. I think Kevin uh, Dombrowski is laundering money in the Philippines with it. And as long as it's going to that beautiful daughter of his and much better person wife than me or him combined, I have no problem with that right now. But the bottom line is... By the way, in, the, in this clip, because Gino's a little long-winded. In this clip, Gino's going to defend his own drinking. Uh-huh. I want you to count the amount of liquor bottles that are on that table. <laughs> I'm watching him, like, fumble with glasses. Like, he goes to pour, doesn't pour, sets it down, grabs yeah. another glass, pour, pours a little bit, sets that one down, grabs the other glass, goes to pour, doesn't pour that one, sets... His, what are you doing? His drinking makes drink me anxious. Drink the drink or just don't. Like, I, I don't... Ah! Or fucking go fund me for a dead fucking alcoholic. No offense, cowboy fucking Bob. Um, I have no time for this shit. None. What? Garrett. No, never. Steve Garrett, would you like a shot of Jameson? I'm a living oh, alcoholic. Shot of J-Mo? Nah. Steve. So I you're think that, today. that was the first You're not, you're not starting until later? Okay, so he's done now. <laughs> and so he goes off on a little rant about the guy's uh -huh. dead friend. Uh, then a few minutes later, we get Gino circles back nah. to... The con the the, uh, the GoFundMe and that literally and maybe that's why I'm an arrogant prick about it because I'm fucking spoiled and the second he said that I'm like I'm fucking up my like my brother lost his mother and father too and now he's, he's talking about how how rough he had it after his mom died what a spiral he went into okay. but then his brother said I've never seen you this shitty before and he said well I got to snap out of it then for other people. And yeah. that's kind of the problem he had with this GoFundMe. Worried about me, and I will say it again, so I can be a vindictive S T A N C I L cunt. I will, I will. I'm sorry, Derek Farquhar. I'm sorry that my family loved me enough to make me feel obliged to make them fucking happy and be the best person I could be for them. <laughs> that said, Derek, come on in. What say you, buddy? Yeah, Jim Stansel, Gino Biscani. How much money do you guys have fucking saved up in the bank? If you died tomorrow, how would your family fucking bury I have you? a life I insurance policy. Have I have a they life insurance policy. Mute him for a second. Funeral. Mute him for a second because so, I love so, so I will say, Derek did walk right into that. Most of us, when we become adults and we get our first job, one of the first things we do is we get a life insurance policy. Yeah, at uh, least to cover your fucking funeral expenses. Right. I don't care if it's a one hundred thousand dollar policy, five hundred, a million, whatever it is, just so your bills are paid, your house is paid for, yeah. and whoever you leave behind, yeah, they have a house to live in, they pay for your funeral, they have a little something to you know maybe pad them, yep, for a little bit. Uh, don't make it too much that if your wife hates you, uh -huh. she can have you killed. And then, you know, don't get, don't get like, don't be dumb. Don't get like a $1.5 million life insurance yeah. policy. Ooh. Nobody likes you that much. Uh, I would say, do you know anyone Especially who wouldn't? Especially not a woman. Yeah. Do you know any <laughs> woman who wouldn't turn you in for $1.5 I think not. Show me this lady. Uh, but especially not. Uh, Love that chicken from Popeyes. So. Gino, uh, Derek kind of walks into that one with Gino where he goes, how yeah. much money do you have? Uh, if you pass away, and it's like my life insurance, my family would cash that. They'd be home free. Yeah. I don't leave. Uh, I I don't leave my family burdened. Uh, right, like a responsible adult. And, and one thing alcoholics lack a lot of the time responsibility is responsibility. So, my my thing here, I'm so conflicted because sometimes people sound like dicks, but they're not wrong. But it's also you go, wow, th that, that politeness in you kicks in and you're like, that's not very tactful. You know, well, you know like, is Gino truth, wrong? You know, it just hurts. Right. Is Gino wrong? Like, did this guy not drink himself to death? And by the way, if you quit and that kills you, that's still drinking yourself to death. Yes. If, if you drink yourself to death, do you deserve a shitload of sympathy from strangers? Probably not. You probably mm -hmm. don't. But also, I would say this. Once it's done, I don't think we need to keep kicking the dirt on the grave. Well, I you, think need to, you do need to bury the body. Well, no, I, you don't need to throw <laughs> extra dirt. You're right. I mean, you can't leave an open grave also. That's true. But I, I would say that, like, because I got the GoFundMe link. You know, I got it just like Gino got it. And I, I retweeted it. I shared it uh, because I was like, well, the, Thoughts and prayers. here's what I thought. These guys, he was their friend. 
this. They're trying to get a thing going for your friend. People who see it don't have to give to it, you know, and it yeah. doesn't cost me anything. And I, it's not a cosign or a rejection or an acceptance or anything else. Uh, these guys are fans of our show. We've done their show before. They seem like they need help with something. Here you go. Yeah. Whereas Gino went, you know, Gino seems to have a problem with the, the concept of this guy dug himself a hole, mm -hmm. left a burden behind for everyone else, and he doesn't feel like he wants to promote that. And then when the person calls in, and here's where Derek had a problem. Derek went in to confront Gino. Neither of these two came into this to go, how do we back this off a little bit? Right. How, how do we, uh, what do they call it in the police academy, de-escalate okay. this situation? Another police academy re uh, reference yeah, tonight. <laughs> Derek came in with a cunty question. Yeah, how much money do you have? Gino was like, oh, yeah, fuck you. Watch this. Life insurance policy. Now... Yeah. You okay? You came in combative. He came in over the top. Now you now he feels he has to go over the top, and this is where we get situations like this. Derek, but you just struck out. You sat on hold. I have a life insurance policy. Do you know why? Because I would hate for my loved ones to be saddled with my fucking bills, and I pay one hundred seventy-five dollars every three months to Prudential. Gino, stop flexing. That's enough. <laughs> That's enough, Gino. You're a little. You're out. One hundred seventy-five dollar flex there. Yeah, you're. Uh, just... You're. You're. You're out of line a little bit there with the sixty bucks a month for your life insurance. So wow, it doesn't really go up that much when you get into elderly phases of your life that's not that much more than i pay yeah well, you got that to look forward to motherfucker that guy pays less for life insurance than i do i'm maybe maybe years. he's insured for less you didn't get what he's insured for you know i just realized i think i broke my own rule because i think i'm insured for either 750 or a million so i april's got Ooh. a decent reason to have me knocked off if you will all right, let's let these guys continue. Because I'm responsible. But you know what I wouldn't be able to do if I was a chronic fucking selfish alcoholic? Juggle. <laughs> Should we go back and... I'm sorry, I didn't... I didn't mean to interrupt. All right. $175 every three months to Prudential because I'm responsible. But you know what I wouldn't be able to do if I was a chronic fucking selfish alcoholic? Wear headbands like that and feel unashamed. Sorry. $175 every three months to Prudential because I'm responsible. But you know what I wouldn't be able to do if I was a chronic fucking selfish alcoholic? Have the energy to yell this much at 54 years old to a uh, quadriplegic about his friend's GoFundMe. Oh, Jesus, the guy's quadriplegic? Yeah, oh, yeah. No, not the guy who died. The guy he's yelling at. The sweet irony of this, the cripple lived. <laughs> the drunk is dead. <laughs> Cripple oh, lived, boy. drunk is dead. Do you have one? I, no, I'm, okay. I'm not good at sorry, I'll I'm let not, this I'm go. I'm not good at these. Sorry. Right. sorry $175 that's not my every three months to Prudential because I'm responsible. But you know what I wouldn't be able to do if I was a chronic fucking selfish alcoholic? Uh, be able to fuck a woman who's young enough to be your daughter. <laughs> Maybe you'd be able to. I don't. Not Keanu, though. She'd probably have less teeth. Uh, but not not the lovely and sweet and talented Keanu C. Thompson. That's for sure. $175 every three months to Prudential because I'm responsible. But you know what I wouldn't be able to do if I was a chronic fucking selfish alcoholic? Yell at a cripple? <laughs> See, this is why you don't ask yeah. open-ended questions on your right. program. People can pause them yeah. and then throw. Like, I'm making guesses. Should we see what the answer was? Zumok should be watching this. Yeah, segment. Chad, I'm trying to teach you how to do a fucking show. And I'm shitting on my friend. I would not fucking say, why am I giving $175 every three months for money I'll never see? Oh, yeah, because I'm a selfish dead fuck. I'd Go be again. spending it on liquor. See, now this is where it got to me a little over the top. He goes, oh, yeah, because I'm a selfish dead fuck. And like, while I was listening to this, my whole point was, I was like, I don't disagree with the spirit of what Gianu, or what Gianu. Gianu. <laughs> I don't disagree with the spirit of what. What the fuck is Gianu? Gino and Keanu. Wow. Um, I don't disagree with the spirit of what Gino is saying. Yes. That being said, it does seem a bit insensitive at the time of the man's death. 
Like, this, you know, it's kind of like Adam Sandler and mm -hmm. The Wedding Singer. Oh, this information could have been more useful to me yesterday. I kind of feel Gino's passion and rage on this one. <laughs> really? Yeah, this is kind of You are mean. filled with irrational hatred, is, though. Is it really irrational? Not irrational. Over I think the top. I have plenty of ration. Over the top hatred. The, the, the rationale behind the hatred is legit. But I can you, rationize it, yes. You can rationize it. <laughs> yes. He's from Sock Rapids, Minnesota, boys and girls. Again, Derek, 0 for 1. Don't mention that shit again. He's 1 for 1. He's 0 for 2. Oh, is he's it 0 for 1. I didn't, oh, what did I didn't you do? That, I, I didn't fucking worry answer. about my friends and family. Your friend didn't, and he's still dead. Go again, Derek. <laughs> I didn't get See, you and I, I differ here on this. I, I just want to point out one, two, three, four liquor bottles <laughs> on the desk. But also, I guess, one, two, three living people as well. So <laughs> there is that. Get the How answer. dare you? He asked both of us. Can I answer? Oh, you go. I have always said, uh, just throw me in a dumpster. Burn me. <laughs> I don't care. So, yeah, no, I don't I have, have any money. I'm very Brett the Hitman Hart is right. <laughs> Back to the future glasses. What the fuck? Uh, he's futuristic Stancil. He's Jim oh. Stancil from the future. Oh, okay. By the way, when Gino comes to town, I think next time him and Keanu should bring their pet monkey, Jim Stancil. I think he'd be a, a blast. Yeah, yeah, Hang out. Any, Did any you know guy, this man? Five no. foot four. Really? Yeah, he doesn't look it. <laughs> oh, that's because all the necks on all the chairs under him are like pushed down to the bottom. His is all the uh -huh. way up. Yeah. Very sure poor. Uh, donate. I'm sure your mom. Yeah, burn me alive. Burn garage. me dead. I don't I'm care. Sure I don't want to fucking. What am I, gay? Money. I need a whole Catholic funeral with bagpipes. Right, what are you you inside, Derek, gay? answer what my you question. Go to church? Throw me money. in a garbage and get hammered afterwards. Derek, answer my question. How much the money that made me die. Get hammered. Yeah, you can't drink at that guy's funeral. It's kind of rubbing salt in the wound. Pussy, look, I'm drinking. I'm still yeah. alive. Don't pour shots on his casket. That's reinforcing bad behavior. Let the guy get clean in the afterlife, at least. Do you, you think in, uh, you guys are fucking in a fantasy world anyway, Bobby? It's comedy podcasting. Uh, it's all a fantasy <laughs> world. This is what I'm <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I like... None of this is real. This is all bullshit. This is why you shouldn't bring this stuff. And, and I would have given Derek this advice, but again, I don't feel it's my place because the guy's already dead, so it's easy to captain hindsight the shit out of this. Uh -huh. But if you have a guy, uh -huh. and I've, I've done a radio show where you know, you've got to clear it with a company and bosses and shit like that, I can tell you this, as a guy who's worked closely with all my second mics, if any of them had a drinking problem or a serious problem... I would not allow them on the air to get reinforcement from the audience and affection right. from the audience because that'll just keep the alcoholism going because yeah. you'll have a level of celebrity, notoriety. People will be like, oh, you're great. You'll go to live events. People will buy you shots. It reinforces what you're doing. It, well, it helps with, yeah, I, it, it I wouldn't, fuels that behavior. Yeah, I wouldn't bring him on podcasts and then bring up the fact that he's too fucked up or he drinks too much because then, ha-ha, my alcoholism is a bit. Maybe I don't have to fix it. It's good for the show, blah, blah, blah. Addicts are so sen like they're so sensitive mm -hmm. to different stimuli that one of the worst things for them is positive reinforcement in a public forum. Yes. Even if you think you're confronting that. them and you're shitting on them, they're still seeing people in a chat room or and it doesn't take much. I mean, people who have podcasts where 10, 20, 30 people watch, that's still a dedicated group of people and those people will give you that reinforcement that you want. So, I would not like let's say Johnny was going through it and was having, you know, like he, he talks about how before he started working on the show, uh, he had, you know, his mental problems and thoughts mm -hmm. of wanting to, you know, tap out and all that stuff. Yep. If he were back in that world, I would, I, I would say, look, man, we got you covered. The job will be here when you come back. Step out of the public shit because that's not going to help and go rest, get better, the whole thing. And anything you need from us off the air, we got you. But, I, I will say this. If you got a guy, I think the internet is the worst place for a guy trying to get clean off of something. Yeah. I don't think it's good. Oh, for sure. For a sec, and I'm muting you. This You're is not, this is not fucking MLC. This You're is not fucking uh, Chad Zumok. This is real life where I'm not full of shit. 
And I, it reminds and me of talk Snoopy. Over me, so I can't even fucking make my point. Yeah, no, I know, you can I make your you point do. when you fucking defend what I said. How much money defend do you think you fucking said. stop? Fucking hang up, mute him again, and then we're hanging up. You listen to my fucking question, Derek, because I walked you right through it. I said one. I mean, in fairness, you called into the Gino Bisconti show. You didn't call into you know point counterpoint. Doesn't that take extra effort if you're a quadriplegic too to call into a show? <laughs> right. Holy shit! How he went through all that effort. As a quadriplegic, he cannot move, and he called into Gino's show. That's a good point. Gino should be nicer. Look at this freeze frame. Look at his face. He's I a like how the other guy muted himself. Yeah. If fucking I die, fucking I have a $100,000 life insurance policy that I'll never see. And I fucking have never missed a premium knockwood on that. Oh, that makes sense. 60 bucks a month for 100000 at his yeah. age. Okay. <clears throat> I wonder how much mine's going to be if I don't die. Because what are they? I can't remember what the term on mine is. 15 or 30. What are they typically? Well, I don't know. You don't drink publicly like he does. So. <laughs> <laughs> you might get a better deal. Because I know. I know I well, need to take care of people. Like, Why are you letting him fucking talk? I'm sorry I'm yelling at you. <laughs> Derek, answer this question. Yeah, how like, much money do you think? He's sitting there going, these fucking alcoholics, while he's sliming a <laughs> bottle of Shamboard on the desk next to a bottle of Jameson next to shot glasses. And these fucking <sighs> drunks don't get it. These pieces of shit. These worthless assholes. But the thing is, he knows he's a drunk that does get it. <laughs> He's not denying it. He's just saying he gets it. I think the That's lesson. That's what it is. I think the lesson that everyone should take from this, no matter which side of this you fall on. Gino is amazing. Never send Gino a GoFundMe. <laughs> That's probably what we should all take from this. Unless you want entertainment. <laughs> Here, I'm checking. Yep, still. Dead friend spent every fucking day on booze that he drank so much he gave him a seizure that he couldn't put any aside and don't say he had a sickness. Answer that, then go on. Let Derek talk. And I love you, buddy. I love this fight. Go on. No, the, the point is he was actually trying to quit drinking. You said he died because he didn't care enough about his family. But the fact is he was trying to quit drinking because he cared about his family. And when you say that, why don't you just not say anything? Why don't you just ignore my text asking See, you now that is, I am very sensitive to Derek's point on that. Why not just go, fuck this. I'm not promoting that fucking GoFundMe for a drunk who, and, and I, I, will, uh, I will say this. I don't think it's fair to say, oh, he died because he tried to quit drinking. If you're so far along that quitting drinking kills you, the drinking killed you, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, the there needs to be a certain, yeah. The drinking killed you. You just didn't know it yet, and it took you... Your body was so unhealthy for so long that getting healthy, it went, oh, if we have to be healthy, we're going to die. That's the drinking then killed you. Um, if, if you get shot by a bullet and it severs, your, uh, it severs a, a, an artery and you bleed uh -huh. out, you didn't die from blood loss. You died from getting shot. Yeah. You know, it was uh, not the symptom. It was the root cause. So I do take Derek's point there where he says, hey, fuckhead. Instead of going on your show and shitting on my dead friend because I sent you his GoFundMe to see if you could help out a little bit, uh, why didn't you just not say anything instead of going and shitting I, I, on my buddy? I have an answer for that. Okay. So, two words. Gino Bisconti. <laughs> the fuck do you expect? It's Gino. And that's where I will say to Derek that maybe next time we don't send GoFundMes to Gino. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Just fucking repost the fucking GoFundMe. Why don't you just keep your fucking mouth shut? Why do you have to rattle on and make us feel bad? Our friend just fucking died. We're not asking. In fairness, you should feel bad when your friends die. I mean, I would feel bad. <laughs> yeah, it'd be weird if you didn't. Why won't you bad? let me be happy that my friend died? It's like, because you shouldn't be. I mean, you really. I have, a, I have dear friends that I'm hanging out with this weekend. Not you. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. <laughs> You don't like boxing. No. No. I mean, you wouldn't have someone fun. wanted to box me in the chat. I'll train you. <laughs> um, I, I, no, I, I can kind of. So I forgot what I was going to say because I made fun of you. Uh, I'll be hanging out with dear friends this weekend. If yes. my friend died, I'd feel terrible. That would uh -huh. really affect me for a long. I mean, then I'd have to, like, you know, take care of my kids and I'd be like, sorry, buddy, I got to forget about you. Yeah. Uh, I got shit to do. Yeah. But for bills to pay, for, you know, for like three, four days, your life insurance policy to come. Yeah. In. 
for three, four days, I'd be like, yeah. I'm very sad that my friend's dead. That would yeah. put me in a fucked up spot for a yeah, while. Once every three, four years, you have a thought like, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. It was fun that one time. Nothing Gino Bisconti could say on In Hot Water about my friend would make me feel shittier than the fact that I don't have my friend around anymore. Yeah. And, and I will say this. If my friend drank himself to death, there would be a large part of me that would be very upset with him. I would yeah. hold a grudge for a while that my friend did that to himself. But continuing on. I, look, I, I, have, uh, I have very hard, unforgiving takes on suicide also. Uh, I, I would, I, I'm very, yeah. I would, I would be very upset with a friend of mine if they did that. I, it would be hard for me to forgive them after their yeah. death. That they, especially if you leave family and shit behind. And kids, yes. I'd be like, you motherfucker. I don't care how sick you were. I don't care how hurt you were. Don't bring other people into your fucking shit if you can't hang. You know, try to leave as few of victims as possible. Yeah. Get for sympathy. You said like, oh, well, these guys are asking. Fuck you. We're not asking for sympathy. We're asking for the family to have a little help with the fucking funeral. His mom's a single mom. She's broke. Why do you have to be a fucking asshole about it and just fucking ignore us? Oh, you're shame, you're Instead of right. making a point of making everyone feel. Another kid from a single family, uh, single mother household doing very well. I, <laughs> I'm sorry, but the stereotype exists for. I'm joking. I don't want to be Gino. I don't want to be insensitive <laughs> to the dead. I do a comedy show. I can't afford to take any of this seriously. Oh, I have. This is the thing about internet and podcasts and all this shit. All these people. And this is the, and, and I love Derek, but this is the problem with Derek and all this. None of us are friends. Right. I have friends. You, you have friends, right? I have a couple. Okay. You're an adult. You only, Just need a couple. A, you only need a couple. Yes, you only need a couple. We all have friends. I would feel like I'm insulting my friends if I only saw someone through a computer screen and I called them my friend. We're not on, that's not on the same level. No. We are work accomplices. Uh, accomplices. Uh, we are work uh, associates. As, uh, associates. Sure. I don't right. know. What's the word? I'll give you a great example. Am all I right. friends with Mersh? Have you met Mersh? No. Uh, no. We're not friends. No. I like Mersh. Would I like to hang out with Mersh someday? Yeah. I yeah. think he's a really funny guy. I think he'd be a really fun dude to hang out with. Is, Mer uh, is Mersh one of my friends? No. Are you if friendly I had a problem, with Mersh? Mersh and I get along very well. Yeah. We bust each other's balls when we're in each other's chats. We send each other money, so on and so forth. Which is kind of stupid because like once every few weeks, I'll send him 10 bucks. Mm-hmm. And then a couple times, like once a week, he'll send me like four to six bucks. And I'm like, why don't we all just keep our money and just write things to each other? I, <laughs> I don't understand why we're doing this. But um, if I had a problem in my life, would I call Mersh? Absolutely not. I would consider that a grave overstepping yeah. of whatever acquaintanceship we have. Right. That would be fucking weird if I called him. I think the problem Derek had here was he looked at Gino as kind of a friend figure. And they're not friends. They're there. There is. There's a thing like people look at internet people as being their friend. No, it's internet friend is different than real life friend. I don't even think they should be called friends. I don't. I, I agree, but they look at that and they they see this friendly interaction. They go, "That's my friend." Yeah, it's not. I I have you shared have no idea. I have shared experiences. Memories, time, face to face with Gino Bisconti. I, I yeah. text him. I call. I talk to him regularly. He's a friend of mine. Yes, Gino is my friend. Uh, is um, is Derek my friend? No. Do I like Derek? Yeah. And I like when people start a podcast and they try to get involved and, and expand it and grow it. I think mm -hmm. that's great. But I think Derek sent this to Gino, thinking that Gino saw Derek as a friend. And like, hey, this guy is my friend. So, Gino, would you do something to help out my friend since we're friends? And Gino doesn't play the internet shit either. So he goes, well, this guy's not my friend. Right. And this, he sent me this GoFundMe. Fuck this GoFundMe. I don't like that this guy drank himself to death, so on and so forth. So I'll shit on it on my show. And Derek feels hurt and betrayed because he saw Gino as a friend. And that's the mistake. That is a rookie mistake you'll make on the internet. The first time an internet guy you feel backstabs you that's when you have to learn the lesson that oh we're not friends yeah but these are all just people who do a podcast that's why like 
that Dabbleverse shit. After a couple months in that, I went, I got to get away from these fucking lunatics because these are the kind of people who will go, oh man, I got a DM or oh, I got an email from this guy. Oh, if anything ever happens, I can use this shit against him. And you're like, what a sociopathic, psychotic way to live your life, especially yeah. when you're in your 50s or 60s. I'm like, okay, I can't be associated with that. I don't take the internet that seriously. Uh -huh. I got to get the fuck out of here. So Derek and Gino keep fighting. Are you entertained by this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Because yeah. there's like 20 people watching right now that actually were friends with the guy, <laughs> and you're shitting all over us and being a cocksucker. Why do you have to do that part of it? Why don't you just mind your own fucking business and move on with life instead of like, uh, w what, what point are you making now? He's already dead. Why are you like dancing on his grave? I will say this. He dude, dance and he's got his feet up. Yeah, he can't dance with your feet up. What he, was he, Christopher Walken? So I will say this, Derek. I don't think Gino was affected by this. Uh -huh. I don't think there was a great impact. I also, I will say this. If you're going to do a show, never pull the card where we go, you're going to lose fans over this, mister. It ain't a fucking Kohl's or a Target or a Mall of America or anything like that where the customer is always right and you're going to... I have said, and, and Matt's been a listener of uh, Steel Toe from day one on the radio... I have always had, even, um, I, uh, we get along now, but Joe, uh -huh. even when he was like, well, mister, if you keep doing this show like this, I'm going to leave. I go, fucking go. I don't give a shit because when you leave, me ranting about you leaving will grab me four new fans. And now I grew by <laughs> three fans. Growth by inches, my friend. So yeah. it, it's, it, you know, God closes a door, he opens a window, that kind of thing. So <laughs> jump out of when Derek goes, there's like 20 people who aren't going to listen to your show anymore if you... You have hurt feelings because of what he said about your friend. Don't pull cunty shit like, you're going to lose business, mister. And he doesn't give a shit. Nah. I can promise you. He was a fan of yours. He would have loved to have had uh, known that, like, you just fucking said something nice about him and moved on with life like you've done before. For some reason, you decide, she I don't know, do you have something against alcoholics? You are one. Oh, oh see now that. See now that. In Derek's defense, he probably thought, well, I'm done with this motherfucker anyway, so I might as well get my shots in. Mm. But there is something a little disingenuous about reaching out to the guy with your GoFundMe, and then when he tells his audience what he thinks of your GoFundMe, now all of a sudden you think he's a drunk, and he has no audience, and he's this, and he's that. It's like, okay, now we're hurt and we're lashing out, is what that is. I'm an alcoholic. Because you drink. Okay, I go back. I, 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 I stepped over. Hold that on. Part. Nice about him and moved on with life like you've done before. For some reason, you decide, I don't know, do you have something against alcoholics? You are one. Photoshop something. How am I an alcoholic? <laughs> now, I know Gino Bisconti. I know that Gino, but there is a difference between someone who can party and an alcoholic. Gino can party. Gino's not an alcoholic. After right. Gino parties... Alcoholics don't accuse you of trying to poison them with water? <laughs> he was partying. When Gino, when Gino wakes up after partying, he needs to die the next day. Yes. And, he, and we sit around, we watch Sports Center all fucking day, and we go, when do we feel like getting up and doing something? And we're like, I feel like we can get to the deck furniture. <laughs> all right, that's a start. Uh-huh. Because you drink fucking every day and out of control. Ask Aaron Berg. I don't know. Why. Where's Aaron Berg? See, now that's... Go to Aaron Berg. Ask him. If you... now, I'll tell you why that's shitty. Because now you're doing fan shit. Now you're doing internet mm. fanboy shit. Where you're like, you're Aaron Berg. Okay, that's like internet guy shit. You didn't know Aaron. I don't know Aaron. I know this Aaron. Yeah. I don't know the relationship between Aaron and Gino. I would never comment on it. I would never say, oh, Aaron Berg thinks you were drunk. I don't know what Aaron Berg thinks. Right. But if I'm trying to be hip... In the know, like insider listener guy, I would pull that card. You think calling into this show and using Aaron Berg as proof is going to win an you argument? You trash my friend. I don't give a fuck. Why in didn't... fairness, your friend's dead. Gino, you can still hurt his feelings. <laughs> um, that's not very nice. You can say whatever you want about your friend. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, kind of going to go right over the top. But uh, Gino can still be hurt by all this. It's, it's all so unnecessary. We don't need to do this to each other. I don't think Gino has the mental capacity to be hurt by this. It doesn't. <laughs> he does. Him. He does seem it rather comfortable. He just. He, can you have you? his fucking feet are up. He's kicked back in a chair that you should not be sitting like that in. <laughs> and again, every container on this 
table has booze on it. Gino has Why booze in his hand. Why am I an alcoholic? Tell me how I'm an alcoholic. I put my feet up, lay back. I got five balls of booze around me, 18 shot glasses. Why am I an alcoholic? Balls in your court, asshole. <laughs> Go ahead. Stump the swami. How am I an alcoholic? And this you know what I, guy still can't come up with why he's an alcoholic. You know what I'd be doing is I, it, it, this would be the peak of comedy. If I'm Gino, I go, tell me how I'm an alcoholic. And I'd swat all the booze bottles <laughs> off the table when I did that. Uh, this Joe, conversation with your friend. friend. I'll trash you. You can trash me all you want, buddy. But why didn't you have this conversation with him when he was alive? <laughs> Oh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the tough lesson that Derek is learning about how the people on the internet are not your friends. <laughs> because Gino uh, would not say that to a friend of his. No. Gino would have some sympathy yeah. and some tact. Uh, Gino did not see you as a friend. He saw you as a guy on the, <laughs> the uh, internet on the internet, yes. Yeah. I did. If you go back and watch every episode where I said, hey, what the fuck are you doing showing up all wasted and make fun of them for an hour for being way too fucked up? Okay, but that's not what, if you really are concerned, you don't do that. That's not, as a guy, again, and I know internet people hate it when I do this, but there is a level of professionalism with radio that doesn't exist on podcasts. As a guy who did this for a long time, the last thing you should do if you have someone you're working with who is an alcoholic or an addict of any type or depressed or anything else, is bring them on the air and publicly admonish them for yeah. being an addict. Yeah. It's, it's something that if you talk to Howard Stern privately, he wished he would have never done with Artie Lang because he pro at some point, at some level, he should feel responsible yep. for Artie Lang because he took him on the biggest radio show of all time and used his heroin addiction as material. And Artie insisted that he didn't mind because Artie liked the attention he was getting from the audience, but it wasn't helping his actual addiction. So no, it fueled it. It gave him money for it. Right. So the kindness you have to do an addict when you work in any kind of public forum is tell them privately they need to step away. Yeah. That's the only way people can get help. Even I realize that. Yeah, and you're not even an alcoholic yet. I'm barely a decent person. <laughs> so when Derek goes, oh, no, Gino, on our podcast we did together, uh, I told him and I made fun of him for being a drunk. I'm I'm sorry. You don't make fun no, of alcoholics for do. being drunks. You, you get you tell them, hey, you know, you send them a text during the show. Hey, man, log off. I'll talk to you after the show. Mm -hmm. We'll have a discussion. I'm not going to talk to you about your drinking and stuff like that in front of all these people. You know, uh, treat your internet show, and let's say there's 50 to 100 people watching, let's say. Treat that internet show as though it's a public lobby and everyone can hear your conversation. You don't have that conversation with an addict in a pu in an addict in a public lobby with fifty to one hundred people in it. That would humiliate them, and, and they you know how they would probably deal with that. Go get fucked up. They go get fucked up. So don't do that. When you go, oh, on our podcast, we made it a, a point of comedy. It's like, yeah, it's not a good idea. I can tell no. you this: if if when Matt was a regular on the Steel Toe Show in the radio days, and if Matt ever became a regular again, I'm only using Matt as an example because he's here. And Matt came in fucked up. During the first commercial break, I would say, hey, man, you need to go home. I'll talk to you after the show. Don't do anything. Wait for my call or I'll come over and we'll talk. Mm. And then I'll say, oh, Matt's not feeling well today. He tried to soldier through. And, you know, but everyone who listened to Opie and Anthony and Stern feels like and they start their own podcast. They have this idea that they should be just honest about everything, man. And one thing I learned early on in broadcasting is you don't. No, you don't need to be honest about everything. You can lie to your audience about some shit if it's about someone's personal life and, and things oh, are hanging yeah. in the balance. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I constantly gave him shit about being drunk and well, fucked up. Okay, okay. You can don't. go look at the tapes. They exist. All right, then why didn't he listen to you? I wish he would have. He waited too long like question. a lot of why alcoholics do. Why don't you? you quit drinking? I don't need You're to quit drinking. You're a fucking alcoholic, too. I'm, I, let me tell you I was an alcoholic. I can spot one from a mile away. You are one, whether you fucking you uh, liquid try to like liquid drink yourself out of a fucking alcoholic stupor every once in a while. Congratulations. That's oh, I didn't that's know. real. Uh, you know what? I will I will defend Gino Bisconti <laughs> on this one. Addicts don't do intermittent fasting to try and cleanse their body of the toxins. Here's what addicts don't do. Wow, I've been drinking a lot this last week. I should do an intermittent fast and clean out my entire system for a week. Yeah. Addicts don't really consider that. No, no. Uh, nice. 
A week? He, right, he again, did for a month, didn't You he? should have this conversation with him. Uh, I did. To, okay. Well, it Thank didn't you. work. Okay. And <laughs> Thanks the, for the, the advice. He's dead. It doesn't really fucking matter. Like you said, none of this shit matters. Oh. All you had to do was ignore my text. Instead, you're a fucking dick about it. I'm not a dick. you fucking said a bunch of shit that pisses all of us off. Now, wa- watch so, this. With I... your last 40 fans you got left, See, now you this... just lost probably five, ten more of them. Goodbye. See, now, th- this is shitty because you liked the guy. You were a fan of his shows. Yep. But now he hurt your feelings, so now he's an alcoholic. Now nobody watches him. Nobody likes him, so on and so forth. That's not like that's a shitty move. I, I get it that he hurt your feelings and he was being very aggressive with you and he was being very upset and all that stuff. But I always hate it when people who like you and then you don't give them exactly what they want, they go, Oh, well, you're just an alcoholic and you have no audience and nobody watches you. It's like, okay, well, now you're being now it seems like you're being dishonest. Like either you were lying then or you're lying now. Which one is it? Do you did you only like this Gino guy because you thought he had a bigger show than you, so he could give you some exposure and kind of push you forward? But what you really think is what you're saying now that he's a drunk and he has no fans and fuck him, or did you really like this guy and now that he's shitting on your buddy, you're just trying to wound him? Like we said, that woman, yeah, the woman thing. When you're making a good argument, they just go, "Oh yeah, well, because your fucking dad's a piece of shit, you're a piece of shit." It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, first part true, but still time for me. Now, so here's when, my point. When you watch your fucking live stream and you got 40 people watching, see, no. now you'll have 30. Okay, goodbye. Now I'm going to say this, Derek. <laughs> okay. See, now it didn't seem uh, to phase him very no, much. No, not at all. I like Derek, but it, that was a bad idea to call and, and, and get mad and get upset. Oh, maybe, and, maybe Derek could take Gino's advice and be like, oh, fuck, yeah. Maybe I did that wrong. Maybe we should make this known. This is how you don't treat your alcoholic or, you know, addicted friends who yeah. are doing a podcast with you. That part does Let's suck. Let's handle this yeah. a different way. Uh, thank you very much to Helgi with five bucks. Says, I just got off the phone with Nick Ricada. He said, you and April should give me power of attorney. Oh, well, oh. in that case, Clearly, I mean. Fucking great legal advice. Nick, that dude. Helgi, you're best in. Best lawyer ever. Phage lives gifting a uh, membership to uh strippers got me banned thank you very much buddy uh let me says rest in peace bobby yeah let me please put the link to the gofundme in the chat absolutely and it's it's very it's terrible uh as someone who has three children i can't imagine the pain right uh, of losing a kid that would be fucking terrible and if anyone wants to contribute to bobby's mother and the family and this and that my commentary was simply the fight those two were having yeah um You know, on one hand, uh, could Gino have just dismissed the GoFundMe and just not said anything? Absolutely. Uh, But also, on on Derek's mistake, are you familiar with Gino Bisconti? (laughs) I was going to say, on Derek's mistake, right? two words. Exactly. And I'm sorry, but I tell people this on the internet all the time, and some people got to learn the hard way. I go, guys, these people, like Mersh said once, and he, he nailed it, these people aren't your friends. No. Be guarded, be careful, just because they have a lot more viewers than you and they th- you think you can do something for them, don't give them the house. Don't give them all the trust, don't give them all the benefit. Gino Bisconti and I started off, you're a Compound Media fan, uh-huh. you, know, you were the one who told me, like, Gino's shitting on you hard today. <laughs> Gino and I started off fucking ragging on each other. He said horrible things about April. I said horrible things about him getting punched by Pat Dixon. And when he was at uh, Content House... Yep. Uh, Carl from Who Are These Podcasts said, you two would get along great. You should just call in and talk to him. And Initially, I wasn't a big Gino fan either. Dude yeah. is ama- in person. The He's guy is guy. awesome. Yeah, he I'm is. I'm sure he Lemmy, really is. Lemmy's a big uh, Backyard Boys fan. Balls Deep, I think, is too. Yeah. And they know those guys, and I think they would both say the same thing. Gino's great. Yeah. Gino's wonderful. Um, and, and Derek's great and Derek's wonderful, but everyone has that moment. And I had it with the crazy fucking dabble verse retards. Everyone has that moment where they realize they learn the lessons of the internet and that you have to stop blaming other people yeah. and you just have to realize, Oh, I learned something here. I fucked up. I stepped into sh- some shit. Gino doesn't see me as a friend if, if I'm Derek and he used me for fodder on his show. Yeah. I need to pull back and not get as involved with these people. Because yeah. they don't see me the way I see them. You know, right. and that, that hurts whether it's in high school with a girl or it's on the internet when you start a podcast. It sucks. Uh, T. Jefferson says, yeah, Gino has crossed into douchebag territory now. 
He has wandered into an irrational ranting drunk here. He is a funny dude, but what the fuck? Don't want to donate? Cool, don't. Uh, but I, I will say that calling in definitely inflamed it. Like that, let him do his little rant. And it, First of all, when he was doing his rant, nobody really knows who the fuck he was talking about. So you probably could have skated on that. Uh, and Gino got that jacket from Matthew Lesko. Actually, Gino got that uh, jacket at the anniversary show from a fan who came up from, was it Chicago? Some guy, he came up from somewhere. Really? Yeah, and brought him that jacket. Yeah. Nice. Uh, D. Guleg says, Gino is coming across a little ghoulish, to be honest. He was definitely leaning the fuck in. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, don't be making fun of people who can drink more than two drinks. You're talking about me? <laughs> Talk, talking about me? Challenge accepted, sir. B.A. Cheddar says, name someone who has died from smoking too much weed or overdosed. Lemmy. Oh, wait, no, she's still alive. <laughs> I'm sorry. See, you know, I've met Lemmy and Granny. I've drank uh -huh. with them. I've hung out with them. Yeah. I would consider them friends. Those yeah. are friends of mine. I've met them. I've, I've, I've seen them in person. I've Makes looked in sense. their eyes. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of fans who have come to every fucking comedy show, and we hang out, we spend time together. Yeah. I would consider them my friends. Like cheese. Uh <laughs> right. Like cheese. <laughs> T. Jefferson says, here's the question. Would Gino accept this disrespect of a dead friend of his? I am willing to bet he wouldn't. He would go nuclear just like he did here, just in the opposite direction. Well, that's kind of the point I'm making. He didn't see these Backyard Boys guys as a friends. Right. They saw, he saw them as guys <laughs> that do shows. Yeah. And he saw them as fair game to attack and shit on and whatever. And I, I get it. Like, that's here's, where I feel here's... sympathy for Derek here because I've been there before where you think someone's your pal, uh -huh. but you're really just show acquaintances, and then they shit on you. And you're like, wow, fuck you, dude. That's a piece of shit move. But I also said, you know what? No, that's on me because I let my guard down. If you play victim in that, in that instance, you'll never learn the lesson, which is I got to keep my hands up. I got to protect myself. I open myself up to be shit on like that. That's on. I, I'm never doing that again. I'm sorry, you were saying. No, you, you flat out said if you had a friend that drank himself to death, like... I'd be upset. Be, yeah, you'd be upset. I'd be mad. Gino probably would, too. It would, judging yeah. by his view, his whole, his whole take on the situation, he'd probably be a bit yeah. pissed off at his dead friend. Right. Uh, Liam Wilson, um, and by the way, if you're new to the show, welcome, buddy. Thank you. I've never seen you in the chat before. But uh -huh. He says, I'm sure he read most of those books. That's a green screen. Uh, he says, work acquaintances. Yes, exactly. Work acquaintances. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Uh, Hobo Chili Recipe says, Mersh told me he likes Eric July more than you. Well, it's a good thing that I'm not getting involved. Perfect. Oh, man. I'm just I'm scrolling through the chat, just finding stuff. I, because I wasn't in the chat this entire time. No, I you, see you, what you went you guys for a while think. there. It was a lot. Uh, Helgi says, Gino put it on blast, which is wrong. You know what? I I can respect that absolutely. Maybe Derek, the good, the one good point Derek made was, you didn't have to fucking blab about it. Like you could have just said, "Fuck that! I don't like this guy. I'm not donating." Yeah. So there's there's definitely that. But part. once he did again, Gino Bisconti. Long Dong just, Max says, uh, "Aaron, are you Chrissy took off? Are you Chrissy took off? I am not Chrissy took off. I don't know who she is." <laughs> This Chrissy took off. Who's a Chrissy took off? But I am not her. If you're looking for her because of some bill collector shit. There is a new screen name. Chrissy took off. Chrissy took Can somebody please change their name to Chrissy took off? <laughs> That'd be good. Chrissy space T-O-O-K-O-F-F. -F. It's got to be one word. Chrissy be hyphenated. Uh, T. Jefferson says he is out. April placeholder hobo. He is a little slow, but that makes Aaron feel cool. Oh, I think he's uh, talking about okay. you. Whatever. Uh, Long Dong Max says, Aaron, are you worried Gino is just using you? I mean, I think people who like Gino would go, are you worried Aaron's just using you? <laughs> the feelings mutual. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, On both sides. <laughs> you know, if we're both using each other, guess what? We're friends. Yeah. That's what friendship is. We're using each other. Uh, Balls Deep, thank you for, I'm going to pin, uh, can I pin that? Oh, shit. I don't know, can you? I'm going to click the link. Here you go, guys. Uh, yeah, uh, Bobby from the bad or the bad luck boys, uh, the backyard boys, backyard bad luck boys is merch. Kind of bad luck. Uh, yeah. There's the link in the chat if you guys want to uh, contribute to that. Uh, 
Long Dong Max says, Aaron, do you really think Gino just used you? That's the third time you've asked that. Oh, I guess I wasn't in the chat. I couldn't answer him. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, you're talking shit on Gino now? I'm not talking shit on Derek or Gino. I think they both raised really I good points. I think you were giving your honest take on the situation. Yeah. And Gino's, <laughs> again, my, Gino's my friend. I yeah. like Derek. There you go. Uh, I feel terrible that their uh, friend died. Not only that, I wrote to Derek yesterday. I said, I forgot to plug that GoFundMe on the show yesterday. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I feel terrible. He's like, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. He's very cool about it. I just, I feel bad for Derek because I've been where he is. Yep. Where someone's not your friend, but you think they are because this internet shit can fuck with you sometimes. Mm -hmm. And he, I, I, I've, I've been in Derek's shoes before. Put it that way, where you, where you feel hurt. You feel hurt, so you lash out because you thought this guy was your buddy, he was your friend. And he's not because you guys have never met in real life. He doesn't think about you. He doesn't know about you, whatever. And, you and I'm sure when you think about him, if Derek thinks about Gino, he thinks, host of In Hot Water, good audience, can get me somewhere, this and that. You know, so there's... Yeah. And you weren't talking shit. Had Gino been sitting in this chair, you would have said the same shit. If you Gino said, was sitting in... Sitting here, me. Where I'm right, at. yeah, yeah, yeah. You would have said the same shit. That's not talking shit. You're giving your honest opinion because you can do that with friends. Hobo says, Gino's great-great-grandmother got long deed by some <laughs> Lee with a more dashiki. Love <laughs> <laughs> that chicken from Popeye's. Jesus. Wow. Jesus Christ. Uh, SH says, it is just the physical dependency, the psychological dependency, or the way it affects your life in a negative way. Is it two-thirds? I don't know. Don't ask what? me about addiction. Why are we getting on? Hobo Chili says, I'm still waiting for Aaron to prove he goes to the gym. His arms look like FDR's polio legs. I got really good cardio. <laughs> Somebody says, send Gino's liver the link. Very funny. Uh, Gray Idol says, it's a good lesson moving forward. Help your friends and family while they are alive. Yeah. Yeah, actually help them. Don't shit on them on a rate or, or a podcast you do. Yes. Lemmy says Gino isn't an alcoholic. He parties. She's quoting me. <laughs> oh man, I get, I know Lemmy and I just know this is going to be bad. Like whatever she's going to say after that it's going to make me look like a piece of shit. How often does he party though? Binge drinking is still an alcohol problem. I I can tell you this, the only time that we drank the last time he was here was when we went to the Vikings game. Here's how I'd classify Gino. When he goes, he goes. Okay. But the next day, he's not going. Gotcha. Uh, he, yeah, so I... It no, kind of seems like Monday through Thursday when I hear the Kumia show, Gino's going. Yeah. I, oh, no, look, I love Gino. I think oh, he's great. Oh, I do, too. Does he drink more than the average person? Yeah. Would some people classify it as a problem? I'm sure they would. Hmm. Uh, from what I've seen personally, I don't think so. I'm not judging. I don't know. Not, <laughs> not one bit, sir. 